The Macabre World Podcast is brought to you by Darker Art Studio, home of real human bone jewelry. Stock and custom pieces are available, so visit us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com and show them your darker art side. Macabre World, a podcast from Darker Arts Studio, where we explore the dark, strange, and unusual from this world and beyond. Hello and welcome to the Macabre World Podcast. I'm your host, Rocky Degatti, and today, Chris Natalini, lead singer of Seeds of Perdition, joins us. Chris, it's great to see you. And hear you. <laughs> great to see. Great to see you and hear you, Rocky. Good. Always good to see. You. Always good to see you. And uh, I'm very fortunate that in addition uh, to having Chris on the podcast, I have the pleasure of calling him and his lovely wife friends. So death metal seeds of perdition is a death metal band. You're signed by horror Gorn, gore pain death records. Correct. That is correct. Yes. And yes. the latest album is suffering of the dead is the latest uh, is our latest record. And would you say you guys would you say it was death metal per se? I guess I I, I think I would probably if I had to put it in a genre it, it I guess it would be considered more death thrash because we do have some kind of thrash uh, metal elements to it but I think uh I for the sake of of um you know, just genre and reviews, they kind of put us in the death metal category, but it definitely has, it's definitely death thrash as that is a new category within the past couple of years. There's a lot of sub genres. There's of, a ton. It's, yeah. There's a ton. It can there's be daunting to try to sort it all out. There's, it is. It is. Cause you know, you never want to be categorized. I mean, it's good to be categorized because if you want people to find you, then you have to be under something. Right. But, uh, but there is, there's so many. And, and, you know, when you're, when you're five guys and you know you're all different age groups, everybody's bringing their own style and genre that they grew up on. So then, you know, what does it really become? You know, and uh, but it is. It's it, there's way way too many. But unfortunately, you know, we put labels on things so we can find that, and that's uh, that's the sad part. It's 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 got to be a difference between fine and define. Yeah, yeah, true. Yes, yeah, yeah that is very. Rather, true. It doesn't point, really yeah. define you. But yeah. So, so we were always into the harder rock or the harder music. Where is because death metal's a relatively? I say relatively because Chris, you and I are of an age um, where we're not twenty one. Um, that's something we kind of saw evolve. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny because you know to break down the fourth wall. You had mentioned that to me when we were, you know, when we before we hit the record button. And that's an interesting, really way to look at it. I never thought about it that way. And yeah, we kind of did that. That is absolutely true. That, I mean, that's a great, that's a really cool thing to think about because death metal has become such this huge, you know, when, when I was younger and death metal became, you know, when it was up and coming, it was so underground. And even, even though death metal is still kind of underground, other subgenres are more underground, but your bigger, you know, your bigger death metal bands, your cannibal corpses, your behemoths, you know, they're, they're big, they're, they're stadium, you know, bands. And it's not really, we wouldn't really consider that underground anymore. So it's kind of, you know, it's, it's like at a national level, even though there is subgenres of death metal, that's still very underground. There are different, there are some acts that are very, very in the big public eye. So that's interesting. You said that that's a really great way to look at it. I, I, well, I there's love there's been that. a lot of genres of music that we've kind of seen seen develop. Um, I remember being very young listening to uh the college radio station out of Rhode Island, out of Brown University, WBRU, and they had uh, a sort of a 360 degree black experience show, which is what it was called, uh, on Sundays. And I started hearing stuff called rub a dub and all you know, some real and that, and then like I don't know, just a few years later, I started hearing rap. And that seemed like it oh, grew okay. out of okay. Jamaican. So we saw that kind of turn into to oh, a thing. It, you know, okay. we saw that. I think it's interesting to see music come out of the roots of something like what are the, like the roots of death metal? I, I would I'm making an assumption. I'm certainly not an authority um, is would be out of like the harder rock and the punk and yeah. the thrash. Yeah. And, and it all yeah, kinda... yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. definitely. You know, it was, you know, it, you had your earlier heavy metal, you know, your Sabbaths, your, you know, your Judas Priest, your, your stuff like that. And then it kind of evolved. And what happened is when thrash metal kind of became a thing, 
there were bands that wanted to play harder and faster and it became death metal. You know what I mean? In, in, in a nutshell, in a quick answer, uh, everything evolved from something else. Like you were saying about Rub Dub and you ended up hearing rap. So it's the same thing. It went from like, you know, hard rock to heavy metal and to thrash metal to death metal or, you know, what, and then just kind of evolved. And it's been, now we have a million subgenres. There are a lot of oh. subgenres. Now, <laughs> I'm assuming that sometimes the, the reference of death metal or death thrash is, is kind of going on the lyrical content. Yes, and, in imagery. Yes, mm -hmm. and and uh, you, you write you write lyrics. Where do you got to come from to get into that headspace? What's what's your process when you're when you're getting into a headspace? Do you have to be angry? Do you have to be contemplative? But tell tell me where you, know, you come up lot, with this stuff. <laughs> I you know a majority of my lyrics there are there are some that are spawned by something. Um, if I'm watching something and, and I'll just give you a perfect example real quick. Um, so on the new uh, seeds record, Suffer the Dead, we have a song called God Ends Here. And that that song literally was inspired by those three words in the very beginning of the movie, The Nun. Simple. The song has nothing to do with The Nun, but it had right. God Ends Here on it. And I was like, wow, that is such a great sentence or phrase. And I just kind of built around that. And um, that's kind of where I write a lot of my lyrics. Like I, I'm, I'm just spawned by something, whether it's something in the news or it's a, a book that I'm reading or a film I'm watching or, um, you know, just a thought. Maybe I'm having a bad day and something just spawns that that uh, that feeling of, of trying to get that release, you know, and really it's, it just for me anyway, I can't speak for anybody else, but for me, it, it comes from um, something that I see or it just all of a sudden happens i it's very i can sit and write lyrics once i have an idea i'm not one of those guys that just sits down and goes okay i'm gonna write a song it's a, for me it doesn't work like that i need something to spark that creativity and like i said with god ends here it literally was just a a phrase that i saw and i just build around it um dead call inside. it the lightning strike yeah, exactly lightning exactly. strike uh dead inside was um based upon um the death of my father the death of our mutual friend um uh mr bigler robert bigler his past his dad's passing and my guitar player dan his dad's passing all kind of happened within a little while of each other and and so dead inside kind of that sparked that that it, it started um it started with my dad but then i i was you know with with uh you know, with, with Bert's father passing and Dan's father passing, it just kind of, it, it took those emotions even deeper and it just kind of created that song. Well, I think, you know, anybody, it, and, it, and I think some may, may say, well, you know, it's very difficult music to relate to. It really isn't. No, it because, isn't. And I it think isn't. that a lot of people might be put off by just hearing it's death metal, you know, that there's, yeah. there's, a, there's a whole lot of emotion that's true common ground embodying you know sorrow frustration and a lot of the 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 common emotions we all share yeah I, I think a lot of it too spawns back to you know with death metal the imagery is sometimes so horrific right um so it's it, you know when people hear death metal they think we're you know killing animals and drinking their blood and it's i mean i can't uh, there are a lot of bands that do that uh, but there, there are, are bands that, <laughs> <laughs> but there are bands that really kind of take stuff at face value and take things that are going on in the world. I mean, everybody likes books and movies, right? So you know, you can relate to that in in something. You know, not every not every song is you know worshiping Satan and, and you know and drinking goat's blood. It's that's not always what it's about. Some there are some acts that are like that, and that's okay. But uh, at least for me and for what we do in Seeds, it's just not where we're at. Now it's there's there's definitely a literary thoughtful common uh, theme through all you know it's all like I said it's, it's highly emotional music. It is. It is very emotional. And music, I think yes. that that might strike some people odd to say that it's extremely visceral emotional music. And it is. and it and is. you know I might be biased in the sense that you know being that uh, my better half Steve is your bass player, mm -hmm. and you know I I get to see you guys practice. I get to see you guys play. I get to see how much work you put into it, how, mm -hmm. you know, how much effort goes into the shows. You guys always go 100 percent effort. And it's mm -hmm. and it's 
always inspiring for me to see somebody who's great at what they do, do what they do. Thank you. And, and it, it is, it is always, always very, very cool to see that. But I don't think, I think people might be more surprised. I think, and I, I'm going to just go right out and say it, ladies, mm-hmm. I know you're probably thinking this is stuff your boyfriend listens to. <laughs> well, no, I, I, there are not a lot of one of the greatest things about going to a metal show, girls, is there's no line at the ladies room ever, <laughs> ever. And the thing is, is that I think there is I, I think there's some kind of gender bias. And I don't think it's from the bands. I think it's from the audience that it is suited for or not for women or not for this age or that it i think there's so much that can be identified with that would that would cross all those barriers you know it's funny i you know i i always say uh you know when i was younger and be one of when i said i want to become a singer i you know one of the main reasons was because i won't you know i want to get the girls i want to be the singer i want to be the front man i want to get all the women and then I pick this music and I'm like, yeah, no, it's really, not. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, you know, it's funny because there's a meme going around where, you know, it, it, there's a picture and it said, you know, it's it's like a big orgy of people. And it says, you know, what my girlfriend thinks is going on, you know, while I'm on tour. And then underneath it says what really goes on tour. And it's five guys sitting in a hotel room on their phone. And that literally is what, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, really goes on. Now, I think in 2022 also, I think it's a different time. Um, I think that... Um, you know, I don't and I'm sure there are bands that still do that. I'm not saying there's not. But in my opinion, I, I think those kind of days are are few and far between. I think because a lot of the women that do come to shows and a lot of the women that I have spoken to, whether it be in person or online, they're really, really about the music. It's not about, you know, checking out the the hot right. guy and trying for a hookup. You know, it's really because of the love of the music. And it is a shame. It is a shame that there's not more women to come to the show because um i think they're you know, missing it, out yeah and, and it is you know and it is fun i and because there is such real emotion that we can all connect to um even if you just come out just to see you know you may you know a girl may go wow i'm not crazy about the vocals or whatever but at least you know come out and see the guys that are that are playing you know i, I mean i'm lucky enough to be surrounded by four super talented individuals and just come out and see them. Like, you know what I mean? And, and or like, just it's, it's always awesome to see somebody who's great at what they do, do what they do. Yeah. For There's sure. Value in that alone. But I think sure. it, it's groovier than I thought. I'm going to be honest with you. The first time I went to a seed show, I was like, hey, okay. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I do it because, you know, and I, I went and I was so surprised at how groovy it is. Yeah. That's that, a that, that, stuff. Yeah, that really falls back on on uh, George, who's who's the who's the main main songwriter of the band. Um, you know, he comes from an era where groove is king, right? Like it doesn't have to go a thousand miles an hour playing a thousand minute, uh, a thousand notes per minute. It's about the groove. It's about, again, connection. I'll probably use this word five times in, in tonight's interview. It's about connection. And if you can get someone behind a groove. That's the best thing, man, because they're going to be like, yeah, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like that, that groove. And maybe it'll stick in your mind. You know, there are many times I tell George, you know, he'll, he'll play me a song. And if I think of that song and it could just be a simple riff with nothing else behind it. I may think of that. If I think of that riff for the next two days, like it's constantly just in my mind, like I'm humming it. There's something there because, you know, it, it, it again, it's not about going a million miles a minute. It's about groove it's about feeling it again it's about connection and if you could write a song that really hooks somebody that's the key that's the key because anybody can do you know anybody could play fast and and do it but you know when you have something that that people can kind of you know bounce to or you know bang their head to i mean that's that's the best part that is the best part so that really fought and and our guitar player dan too but george has kind of been the the um the uh cement the foundation of seed so that real that grooves they really fall back on george for sure it's a great sound you know you mentioned like when you decided you wanted to be a singer tell me tell me about young nat when he when he decided yeah. he was going to be a singer uh that young nat well i you know i i have an older brother that's 10 years older than me and he was always a musician so that was so music was always around my house very cool um and, you know, I remember um, 
I remember watching the monkeys and I remember, you know, when they're a little older than me, not much older, but they're older. And I remember watching them when, you know, replays, or whatever. And, and uh, because I wasn't familiar with the Beatles, this was kind of the monkeys were my first introduction to, uh, you know, because they were the prefab four, right? Sure. Um, and there was something about it that the music was catchy and it was fun and it was, it was, it was uplifting. Zany. They were zany. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> zany. And, you know, these crazy characters and and they were nice guys and they were they were, you know, they just had these songs. And and I, I just really attached myself to that. And, I, you know, and I'm like, wow, that's a really cool thing. Like there was just something about them and that music that really connect again, connected with me. And uh, and I loved it. I loved it. I mean, getting chased down the street by hordes of women wasn't the worst thing either. But uh, <laughs> but uh, it's really how fast would you run? <laughs> <laughs> me? Not at all. <laughs> um there was something about that and I really, really enjoyed it. I, I liked, I liked the feeling that it gave me when listening to their music and the, I, the monkeys was probably my first introduction to music. I mean, my, you know, my grandmother, my grandparents always had 45s of, sure. you know, Dean Martin and Sammy Davis and the oh, spinners yeah. and, you know, the, you know, the old Philly sound, you know, the, Tavares and all that. Tavares. And, uh, the monkeys is yeah, a huge the Tavares monkeys, fan. <laughs> Oh, come on. Harry Melvin and the Blue Notes. Come on. Oh, man. yeah. That's what it's all well, about. Funny uh, thing about Tavares, and- I saw them on the back of a flatbed truck in the Fourth of July parade in like 1976 because oh, no. they're from my area. Oh, they're from New Bedford, on. Massachusetts. Seriously? Yes. Yeah, so they used to be yeah, in our Fourth of July yeah. parade and there they all were more than a woman. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's Absolutely. good stuff. Absolutely. The coasters, all that stuff. All that stuff. Um, but the monkeys is what really attracted me to that pop rock, I guess. Right. You could say they were, they were, they had a rock influence and, uh, and it just really kind of carried on from there. And from there, I got into kiss and Van I Halen blame kiss and, for a lot, you know? Well, yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Me too. And then, you know, from Van Halen, it turned into, you know, of course I'm listening to priests and Sabbath and then it got into, you know, and then it just kind of went from there and got you through the 80s. Got more and more metal. galvanized as you went. Yeah, on. You, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> then, you know, then the Motley's and the poison that led to the the Venoms and the Exodus and Metallica. And it just kind of expanded from there up until, you know, here I am in, you know, 2020, uh, 2022. And it's, you know, it's bands like Mortician and Exhumed and Defeated Sanity and all that vitriol and all that kind of stuff. It, there is it, there's a lot out there and i think it's it's great that um we're we're talking to you from the philadelphia area and the yes. scene is fairly active i mean it's it there's a lot out there there's a lot going around it, it's a wonderful community of artists i've noticed that you know everybody knows everybody else and and then you know everybody's able to to have thankfully now that things are getting better have more shows and yes and it and it it creeps out into areas like further north, like into PA, mm-hmm. into New York. So yep. th- I mean, there are yep. there are bands that do shows all the way up and down into the Northeast that are from the local area. It seems. Oh yeah, there's a lot I mean, going it, on. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 for sure. And 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 you know, in unfortunately with the pandemic, it 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 closed down a lot of places. Uh, you know that that a lot of bands frequent it, but there are still places to play and. And, uh, you know, you do them if you can, you know, and um, because you got to get your name out there, uh, you know, when you're putting it because I mean, for me anyway, like you put it, you put all this like you had said earlier, you put all this hard work into it, the lyrics, the, the, you know, the, the writing of the songs, the writing of the music, you're rehearsing for hours every week, every couple of days a week. And, you know, you, you, you take the time and you spend the money and you put it out there. So you want to do things. You want people to hear it. So you travel and or, you know, you play when and where you can, especially, you know, now that we're older guys, it could be a little more difficult. It's not like we can pack up our bags and, and roll out for, you know, six months or whatever. But uh, but, you know, if you can if you can head up, you know, somewhere for a couple of days, then by all means, you know, that's that's the thing to do, because you want to you want to you want to get outside of your normal area. Right. Because, you, you know, you could play the same area 100 times a year. Um, but you're not, are you, are you really 
getting anywhere. It's cool that you, you're playing for the same people. That's great. And you hope that those people bring other people and then expands. But, you know, you want to really get out there. You want to reach other people to kind of spread that word. And it's really like a street team thing. You just got to get out there and do it. Get out yeah, in new places sure, man. And, and bring it out. Yeah, yeah. Because it yeah, ain't like yeah, it yeah. used to be. And it, Internet made it all different. <laughs> Well, it did. Right. I, you know, in the day, you know, now that we're in the social media thing, it did, you know, unfortunately, um, you know, people, uh, you know, there is a, 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 a group of people that w- don't really want to go to shows. They'd rather. And, and that's OK. Um, you know, no judgment on my part, but I want to see live music. But then, you know, there's people that do they they sit home and just listen to the music that way. And that's how they consume it. And uh, which is cool, but you live by the live experience. I mean, I think, you know, I think, I think if you don't include the live experience as at least part of the smorgasbord in, in tasting it. I think you're really, really selling yourself short. I think, I think oh. the live experience for any genre is, is really um, a key. That's your meat and potatoes. And I'm wondering yeah. if generationally that's changing. Cause now, you know, I, I, I sometimes talk to young people and they'll be, listen to me now. I sometimes talk to the young people um, I, I talk to the youngsters and they show me this YouTube and my mom calls it the internet. So they get on the internet, the internet, yeah, the interwebs, yeah. <laughs> you know, the interwebs, you know, and, and, and I'll say, well, you know, such and such. Well, how many views does it have? How many likes does it have? How many yeah. clicks does it have? Yeah. Yeah. Don't base yeah. your opinion on how popular it is. Just take it in and decide if you like it. And and I I'm I'm noticing that one of the nicest things about a seed show is how many different age groups are represented and how many people do come for the live experience. And I think that's that's tremendous. It's keeping something I think that's very important alive. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree. And, and thank you for saying that. Uh, it's nice to hear someone kind of outside of us, uh, you know, recognize that. I think that um, I think there I think with it is a younger game nowadays, right? Because, you know, we're getting older and the new there's a new crop of kids coming up or young adults, right. I shouldn't say kids, younger adults. Um, no, they're that, kids. I've seen their yeah, they're kids, kids, us, right? Kids, <laughs> us. Um, kids. That you know that they they, they they do they see the scene differently. They go, well, how many likes and and uh, you know how many hits have you had? How many downloads have you had? And um, you know you, you just try to you try to do both. You try to do what we do on our experience level, and you try to incorporate that younger crowd because we know we're pretty confident that if the younger crowd hears it then they'll dig it. And then it's just getting to them. And, and, you know, with the, I, I think with um, the two videos that we did, I think the success of them, I think really helped us with the younger generation of people um, because right now visual is the thing, you know, the, the YouTubes, the TikToks, all that. And um, so when we did our two videos, um, I, you know, our, our numbers, speaking of numbers, they went up and I think that's a good thing. And uh in this day and age of selling physical copies, we did fairly well, according to the record label. Fantastic. Which, yeah, which I think, which um, obviously we've had a name for a long time. I mean, I you know, we've been together for eight, nine years. I've been with the band probably nine, ten years at this point. Um, so we have a name. We haven't had anything new out in a long time. We put it out during you know we recorded and put it out during a, a pandemic you know the first of our kind right um and we put out two really great videos and that caught attention to a younger crowd because those videos were making the rounds on social media and that's what everybody's that's what you know that's where everybody's eyes are and i think that really helped with with the with the younger crowd which i'm super proud of because you know being an older guy i was kind of like ah oh, you know Oh, it was super cool to have videos, right? I mean, it, it's amazing. And they were, the work to put into them was ridiculous. Um, but uh, I, I didn't realize the impact that it would have on the band and getting and spreading the word. And it it really, it really was a, a very positive thing. So I'm very happy that we did it. It's, it's tremendous. Now, speaking of the videos, if folks wanted to go and check out the videos, they go to the labels youtube channel or is are they on the scene yeah channel? you go to har pain gore death productions their youtube channel and just scroll down and uh choking with nothing and um and um god why can't i 
think of the other song. Oh, de- uh, de- uh, oh my God, Dead Inside. Thank you. That's one creepy Jesus. That's one- <laughs> and listen, listen, we got it. T- we got a hashtag out of that, right? Like, I, you know, I don't know how many people, but it's a hashtag. One creepy. And it's Jesus. something that people. Yeah. Like, and it, it, you, gotta, you guys got to look up this video to see that. <laughs> but like somebody said it to me. I, I might have been my wife. She was like, wow, like, that's a great hashtag. I'm like, oh, my God, it is like, I, you know, it's something relatable because now we're. You know, now we're kind of incorporating the the hashtags with the younger crowd. And sure. yeah, it's and, something and they, it, they gather steam. They get. Yeah, and, and it did. It, those videos really did. I, I, can't, I can't say enough about them as much as uh, I, you know, I mean, I can only say that we didn't do the the we didn't film it. We didn't do the look. That was somebody else. And it, it's it's an amazing it was an amazing job, an amazing experience. It's and the videos were so well done and they're they're a lot of oh, they're terrific. Oh, you know, you guys, it, it's nice to see a sense of humor uh, in some in some things, because I've seen, you know, different bands and not just in the metal genre, but a lot of bands take themselves so seriously that that what comes across is is sort of stiff and unreactive. And what I liked was is that there was a nice camaraderie and a little bit of a jokes on, on every. Yeah, it was nice to see that you're going to make me, you're going to make me sell myself out aren't you rocky how you're going to make me so well so i'll tell you a story so <laughs> i you know i'm very passionate about what we do i'm very passionate about what i do um very probably a little too much sometimes um there are times that i i uh i can let my emotions get the best of me because i'm very passionate about what we do so when we talked about doing the first video dead inside, my our guitar player George, um, and Stan, your your better half could probably attest to this because <laughs> he's a comedian also, um, oh, no. was is very is very sense of humorish, right? Like he he thought that it should be fun, tongue in cheek, and I'm like. But bro, like dead inside, man, like we're talking about people again, like I said earlier, like we're talking about people that are gone. And and then we did the video and I look at it and I go, damn it. He was right. It made he was right. There's just that little bit of funny. Right. And there was nothing. It didn't take away from the song. It didn't take away from the performance. Just a little in the beginning, a little in the end. And it with, you know, with those two bookends of that video, especially dead inside those two bookends really shows you who this band is these guys we like to have fun and i'm the serious one and in the what? end <laughs> well sometimes Just checking sometimes, I, I, let, let me take out serious and put passion um and then in the end i'm still the passionate one and those guys are the ones that had all the fun right like so when i say it it is the perfect perfect example of who we are on stage live it's a it's a different thing because we always have a great time live with me like i i love live performing because that's when we have a great time we're relaxed especially if we're doing especially if everything's kind of going our way and all the planets are aligned and we're having a great time i love that then we then i'll never forget it one when we talked about doing another video choking on nothing I'm at work one morning and George calls me. He goes, I got this great idea. And I won't tell you the idea in case we ever use it again. But I'm like, but it was ridiculous. And I'm like, George, I, no, like I am not doing it. I like I'm, I literally put my foot down and said, I, I, I can't. I can't bring myself. It's way too ridiculous. And he was like, come on, man. It'll be great. You know, funny. You know, we have to have a sense of humor. Just exactly like you just said. And I'm like, you know what? If you talk the other guys into it, I'm in thinking them guys ain't going to go for it. Well, son of a bitch, they all went for it. And I'm like, well, now I'm stuck because he called me back immediately. And he's like, everybody's in. And I'm like, (laughs) man, I'm like, are you kidding me? So I'm like, okay, we'll do it. That's fine. And when we did choking on nothing, the video kind of took it, 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 it went completely different than what George originally intended. Completely different because when we got there, the vibe was different because of where we filmed it. So his idea and the vibe of the place, it, they didn't match up. 
But then he got this idea that we were going to be, you know, we're in safety vests and we're going to be doing community service. And then we're going to walk in. And he came up with this idea that I was going to be in a sheet of Jesus and this whole thing. And I, I turned that down also, but I did it because <laughs> everybody wanted me to do it. So I'm like, all right, you know what? I'll, I'll do it. And again, son of a bitch, if it didn't come out, Oh, amazing. I am it so really, proud of those really videos. Did. And I, they really did, Rocky. And, you know, and again, I, I can't say enough. You know, the, the humor thing is it is a part of who we are, but that's that's the stuff that I need to sometimes I need to be talked into. I'm a little more lenient now because I did see how it kind of um, it works. Right. And like you had said, it's good to see live. We could have a great time on stage and that's the best time. But I felt for our first two videos, it should be a little more serious. And I was complete. I was completely, were outvoted. <laughs> I, well, I was outvoted. And you know what? At the end of the day, I was completely wrong. And I am totally OK with it. And I am glad I was wrong. I'm you really guys glad. Did great. You guys got you, folks who are listening. You have to check out these videos. They are a lot of fun. <laughs> I purposely didn't and then you mention can watch. the exact and you location can watch. because Ooh. I want people to, to visually take that in. Oh, yeah. 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 His 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 uh, original vision of it and what we were planning on doing, it just didn't work. I mean, even even Eric, the guy who was doing the video came to us, uh, you know, when we were ready to start shooting, he was like, you know, I don't I don't think your idea is going to work. Not that it's bad. It just doesn't work here. Which I am sure will do the idea, so I'm not going to give it away. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Keep one. But, in the uh, camp, as they say. You got to keep one in the can. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm super proud of it. I'm, I'm glad I was outvoted. I, I will say it, that. it really it really did. Come. So what's next? As in like what what's what's now? I know in your career, you've been with more than one band and you've done some really unusual gigs and and some crazy places. What do you, what's next for Seeds? Uh, what's next for Seeds? Well, we we are. uh we have a couple, you know, we have a couple shows coming up in June. We're playing Allentown uh, with uh, our friends Burn and Effigy and, and March to Victory is back, an old uh, band that's your better half. Uh, and I played with many, many moons ago. Um, and then after that, we're doing your better half's birthday party with some uh, wonderful friends. We can say his um, name. He won't run up the stairs. His Steve. name is Steve <laughs> Reamer. And he, <laughs> he's the bass um, player for Seeds. Also the bass player for, for a, a smaller local uh blues band but but here in this context the bass player for seeds and that's (laughs) how he's got a birthday coming up in july you know that's right i think he's a testament to longevity and and i think that there's there's something to be said for how long you've been doing this and yeah you know it takes to keep keep in the game uh, you know you know rocky i well, to, and to also answer your question, we're we're currently writing a, a new Seeds record, so we're we're in the middle of that. We do have a couple of songs that are in the can. Nothing is one hundred percent complete, but a couple of them are ninety percent complete. So uh, we're looking to start recording again very soon. Um, you know, Rock, it comes down to passion. I mean, I know you you know a lot about passion because you have your hands in a lot of different things. Sure. It's passion, and I love what I do. I really do. I love to create. I love to perform. I love to make people happy. I love to make people happy when they leave a, a show that I was on and they're smiling and they just go, man, thank you so much. Like it was such a great time. That's the best thing I could hear. I, you know, it's always cool, of course, to hear you guys are great and that's awesome. But when people go, man, you guys are great. That was a great time. That means the world to me because I just, I, I just love to have a good time and to make people happy. Well, you're doing an awesome job of it. I want to thank you so much for sitting in with me today. We're going to close out after we sign off with a little bit of Dead Inside from Seeds of Perdition album, Suffering of the Dead from Horror, Pain, Gore, Death Records. Chris, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. And oh, I hope Great to see you. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you soon. And everybody, go ahead and check out those videos for Dead Inside and Choking on Nothing on YouTube from Seeds of Perdition. You won't regret it. Thank you so much and stay kooky, my friends. Yeah.
Thank you for listening to Macabre World. You can find us on the web at www.darkerartstudio.com.